Mr. Munnings, the printer, opens his shop door and waves to Miss Lovelace on the other side of the square. Morning, Miss Lovelace. Nice day. Yes, Mr. Munnings, and we are making the most of it. Come along, my darlings. Ah, thinks Mr. Munnings, it's all very well for Miss Lovelace to shut up shop and go for a walk, but I have some work to do. He turns and goes into his shop. The printing press is ready, and Mr. Munnings switches on the motor. I line up all the letters with spaces in between and clamp them in the printing press, a wonderful machine. Posters are in capitals, bold and fat and tall, but the printing in the daily news is often rather small. Now the inky roller comes down the type and back and makes the letters ready to be printed clear and black. I check the pile of paper for every single sheet will be printed by the inky type with letters clear and neat. When they have a flag day, I print the little flags, notices and labels, and even paper bags. I make the letters stand up straight and keep the paper clean. Then the job will be as good as anyone has seen. posters for the mayor's jumble sale. Now to phone the town hall. Hello. Hello. Oh dear, the line's dead. No dialing tone. I'll have to ask Mr. Platt to ring the engineers. And Mr. Munnings leaves his shop, crosses the market square, and calls on his old friend Mr. Platt, the clockmaker. Mr. Platt has cleaned the window cleaner's watch and is trying to make it go. Hello, Mr. Munning. I'm having a terrible time with this watch. It's being very difficult. But I'll persuade it to do what I want. Clocks are rather like people, you see. Clocks are like people. Clocks are like you and me. Each has its own personality. Big clocks, small clocks, grandfather tall clocks, cuckoo clocks, hall clocks, mantelpiece and wall clocks, clocks for the schoolroom, the kitchen and the nursery, alarm clocks to waken us, urging punctuality. All of them chiming, or whirring, or clicking, cuckooing, or ringing, or tick-tock ticking. Clocks are like people, clocks are like you and me, each has its own personality. says Mr. Munnings. Would you very kindly ring the telephone engineers and tell them that my line is out of order? That's why I came to see you. Certainly, says Mr. Platt. Thank you very much. And Mr. Munnings goes out of the shop. The market square is buzzing with activity. Suddenly, a familiar sound is heard. Rag on a bone! Rag on a bone! It's Raggy Dan, the rag and bone man, with his barrow. Raggy Dan's barrow is piled high with junk from people in the square. Bottles and bones, I cry, 
Rags and bones I buy, I buy Listen for me as I'm passing by Rags, bottles and bones I cry Rags, bottles and bones Bric-a-brac bicycles, books or brass Rags and bones I buy, I buy Pottery, pewter or china and glass Rags, bottles and bones I cry Rags, bottles and bones Turn out the attic and under the stairs Rags and bones I buy, I buy Old-fashioned furniture, sofas or chairs Rags, bottles and bones I cry Rags, bottles and bones He's got a good load there, Mr Mullings, calls Mrs Cobbett, the flower seller. He's used to it. He can push that barrow for miles, says Mr Mullings. Mmm, these are lovely flowers, Mrs. Cobbett. Yes, roses and violets today. My favourites, says Mrs. Cobbett. Roses, roses, buy my red roses, scented so sweetly. And fresh as the dew Roses, roses All you fine gentlemen Buy a sweet scented rose But a buttonhole for you Violets, violets Sweet smelling violets Purple and tiny and fresh as the dew. Violets, violets, all you fine ladies, a bunch of sweet violets, a nosegay for you. Mr. Munnings buys a bunch of violets for his wife, then returns to his shop. He's just about to enter when Nick Fisher approaches. Hello, Mr. Munnings. Are the jumble sale posters ready yet, he asks. Why, yes, I was just going to phone the mayor about them. Don't bother about that, says Nick. He's asked me to get them put up as soon as possible. Pasting up the posters, sticking up the bills, Putting up advertisements for sausages and pills Flower shows and concerts, you can take your pick All neatly stuck by Bill Sticker Nick certainly stuck that poster up well, says Mr Munnings, straight as a die and no wrinkles. Yes, yes, marvellous job, says a voice behind him. Mr Munnings turns and discovers that Walter Harkin, the painter and decorator, has been watching Nick too. Hello, Mr Harkin. How's business? Not too bad, Mr Munnings, but things would be much easier if people would take my advice about colours. They waste so much time changing their minds. What colour to use? There's pink and there's purple, it's so hard to choose. Some ask for yellow and some ask for green, and some ask for grey so the dirt won't be seen. Red is exciting and orange is bright, and purple is rich as the sky at midnight. Crimson is splendid for one kitchen wall And pink is quite pretty, perhaps in the hall Black paint and brown paint just simply won't do For an old-fashioned house where the windows are few 
For I think an old house is nicer than new Painted white Ah, yes. Very sound advice, Mr. Harkin, says Mr. Munnings. But here is someone with a nice straightforward job. And hurrying across the square, with his bag of tools and a coil of pipe under his arm, comes Mr. Wilkins, the plumber. Hot water heater takes too long to heat. Overflow pipe dripping into the street A leaky old tap or broken waste trap Just send right away for the plumber Ball valve corroded or mud clogs the drain Winter has brought frozen pipes once again So turn off the tap that shuts off the main And send right away for the plumber Water tank leaking and blocked with dead leaves That winter's cold winds have blown under the eaves The water comes stealing down through the ceiling So send right away for the plumber The cause of the trouble is very soon found The old tank is lowered with care to the ground the new one erected and quickly connected And weatherproof water tight, tidy and trim Is soon with clear water filled up to the brim An excellent job by the plumber this. A post office van draws up outside the printer's shop. Mr. Wantage, the telephone engineer, and his assistant, Fred, get out and open a manhole in the pavement. Don't worry, Mr. Munnings, we'll soon have your phone working again, he calls. Ring, ring, I work for post office telephones. I'm the man you sent for if a fault appears. I check the cable wire and cord connected to the telephones and then discuss the remedy with other engineers. Hello? Hello, we're working on the line. Ring, 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 replace your receiver, please. Post office telephones will send an engineer. Your phone was disconnected by a fault we've now corrected. We are sorry to have troubled you, but now your line is clear. Hello, hello, your line has now been cleared. Ring, 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 I test all the telephones, making certain all the lines are loud and clear. Investigating each complaint of noises, loud or voices, fate the daily occupation of a PO engineer. The occupation of an engineer. There we are, Mr. Munnings, all fixed. Thank you very much. Mr. Munnings looks round the square. Everything is normal. There is nothing to prevent him getting on with his work. Hmm, pity really. Mr. Munnings doesn't feel like work this morning. He looks up at the flags fluttering lazily above the roof of the town hall. Hello, what's that? There's a black object on top of the third flagpole. Other people have noticed too, and are staring up and pointing. The mayor comes out onto his balcony. He knows immediately what has happened. Mr. Clamp's cat is on top of the flagpole. Mr. Troop, he calls. It's Aggie again. Take the usual action, please. Hello, Trompton Fire Station. Captain Flack here. Oh yes, Mr. Troop. Aggie, up the pole. Oh, not again. 
Not at all, Mr. Troop. All good practice. McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble, Grub. engine arrives at the town hall. Cuthbert, to the box. Elevate. Grab Aggie. Meow. Descend. Done, Captain Black, says the Mayor. A very fine rescue. Not at all, Your Worship. Aggie and ourselves are well rehearsed for this performance. I think it's the third time this month, isn't it, Mr. Clamp? Mr. Clamp, with his cat purring happily in his arms, shakes his head slowly. No, Captain Flack. The fourth, I'm afraid. I just cannot stop Aggie from climbing flagpoles. Well, we mustn't be too hard on her, says the mayor. After all, she gives us a chance of using our lovely fire engine. But for Aggie, we'd only see you on the bandstand, Captain Flack. Oh, my goodness, cries the captain. We must be off to get ready for the concert. Goodbye, Your Worship. Munnings looks up at the town hall clock. No, there's no point in starting work now. Just nice time to change into clean clothes, have a leisurely lunch, stroll over to the park and listen to the fire brigade band. <laughs> 